Hello everybody, uh, so I wanted to do a short follow-up video to the Mini Instruments uh, Geiger counter that uh, I did a teardown on and uh, did a bit of investigation into. Um, what I've actually done, I, I decided that uh, to have that box there on the shelf doing nothing and I probably wasn't going to uh, end up restoring it or doing anything like that. I thought uh, the best thing I could do would be to take out the Geiger um, counter side of it and uh, remount it in a nice box. So it would make it a whole lot more usable um, instead of just being sat on my shelf doing doing nothing for, for a, a great length of time. So that's exactly what I've done here. Um, I've got the, the original tube which has been reassembled. Uh, I've got all the original cable and I've just mounted this into a um, an aluminium enclosure. It's actually a, um, a Hammond box that I uh, um, had laying around. Uh, didn't have any use for, so it seemed perfect for this. Uh, so I've uh, mounted the meter into the front here. We've got uh, an on-off switch and uh, connection to the uh, to the tube. So I think this just works uh, a whole lot better than that uh, that big clunky old box. Uh, the other plus side to it as well is. Um, this runs off uh, a battery, so it's portable as well. So that seems to work really quite well. Now, in the meantime, since I made those uh, original videos, I've done a bit of uh, further investigation into um, the tube that I found into here, uh, which also included the um, the shielding that was around the tube as well. Now, what I managed to do is uh, actually find a Mullard technical um, document which details all the specification about this tube and and all of the other um, Geiger tubes that uh, Mullard did back. So this is the uh, document that I was uh, uh, that I managed to find. Um, it uh, gives you all technical details about uh, about this tube uh, including the um, recommended working voltage, the starting voltage um, and some details about uh, how sensitive it, it is as well. Um, so we've got uh, sensitivity um, against a, a radium source. Now, it, unfortunately, I don't have any sources that uh, um, are in any way calibrated, so there's still a bit of an unknown um, quantity with this tube. Whether it, uh, I think it is working absolutely fine, but um, you can. Uh, it's always hard to know about these things sometimes. So we've got a typical test input circuit, plateau curves, the amplitude of the uh, pulse in compared to voltage and dead time plot as well which is um, quite useful. Now the other thing that I did actually find in this manual which relates to the uh, the fact that that uh, this tube um, originally came, if you saw my original teardown it came with um, sections of tin plate uh, wrapped around the tube. Um, at the time I didn't really understand what this was about. Now while I was um, reading this uh, technical document I came across a particular section in it about uh, screening. Now this is the section that um, I found in this, in this document. It's called uh, energy dependence uh, and basically what it's saying is uh, at the lower end of the energy uh, of the particles entering the tube, you get a greater sensitivity to those those particular particles because they are um, absorbed by the filling gas. And above a certain um, energy, the um, uh, the action of the tube is due to the emission of electrons from the cathode. So uh, basically, what it's saying is that uh, lower energy particles will have a higher sensitivity. Now, it's got some example. Uh, graphs here. Uh, we've got. Uh, we don't actually have my uh, the tube I have in this, which is the MX one four five. But we can clearly see that uh, between um, these four different uh, tubes, the the profile is pretty similar, just at um, different uh, amplitudes. Um, so this is uh, non shielded, and then when you have the shielding on, um, you get a much flatter um, energy response from the tube. And further down here, we also have some drawings. Um, got perspex tin, lead, um, shielding around the tube, and it also has this um, inner section, which is part way down the tube, which is unshielded, 
which is exactly what I found in this tube. So obviously what they've, um, they've done is actually um, energy compensated this tube uh, when it was manufactured um, using those uh, two uh, little plates of tin that were wrapped around the tube. So I thought that was uh, really quite interesting and a nice way to get an answer about, uh, about that shielding. Right, I've uh, got the, um, this meter out of the uh, box that I've uh, mounted this in. Um, this is uh, it was an old Hammond um, aluminium enclosure box that I uh, hadn't, uh, hadn't used, so I thought uh, it would work quite well for this. So I've just uh, mounted the panel meter in the front. We've got uh, an on-off switch, and that's the BNC for the connection to the uh, Geiger Muller tube. So on the back here, you can see where I've uh, cut a hole in the uh, the front panel to get the meter through. That then just bolts on the back, um, the, the circuit board. You can see the, the routing for the, the power to the BNC. And uh, just here I've uh, fitted a, an on-off switch. I actually found there was a, a jumper link just, uh, just here that uh, brought the power trace over onto the onto this part of the board and uh, it made a perfect opportunity to take that out and just put in a, an inline power switch which seems to work really quite well. Um, I will probably make holes in the back of the box to allow access to these um, two adjustment pots. Uh, one of them is the drive voltage of the tube so uh, it'd be nice to be able to have that adjustable. Now for uh, powering this, um, it, uh, it's really um, low power. Um, it uh, seems to want to run on about, uh, I think it's about 10 volts, um, but I think it'll probably go up to 12. Uh, so I've just got this running off a, uh, a nine volt battery that I've uh, stuck in the back of the box. Um, the current draw on this is about 1.6, 1.7 milliamps. Um, so it uh, really doesn't take much power at all. Um, the only issue I've got with the 9 volt battery is the um, the voltage on the Geiger tube uh, starts to fall off when the input voltage gets to about 8.5 volts. So I'm not really going to get um, the full capacity out of these 9 volt batteries. So I'll probably end up swapping this out for, for something else. Uh, I'm actually wondering uh, whether I could actually have a solar panel on the top and um, some super capacitors in here and uh, actually have it uh, completely solar powered so uh, I can leave this in the sun and, and charge up the super caps um, and then run it whenever I need to because the uh, the power consumption is so low um, I think that might just work I'll have to do some uh, do some maths and actually work out whether it's actually going to be viable right I hope you found that interesting and I'll see you on the next video see you next time